Well, hello everyone. It's finally happening. We finally received the drop of the preview video for the final chapter of Monster Girl Quest RPG. So, let's take a look at it and see what goodies it has in store for us. The first thing we see is that this game is going to be enormous. Around 800 new Monster Girls have appeared. I hope that's not a translation mishap, but that says 800 new Monster Girls. Keep in mind that when part one was first coming out, we thought we were expecting in total to be around 500. Now part three alone is going to have 800 monster girls. It's just insane. And what's more, even from just this little snapshot here, we've got the white rabbit. We got death. We got what looks like to be the new Ava that'll appear later on in the preview. As well as a couple others over here I do not recognize. As the camera moves a bit further, I can see at least five new monsters, including a gigantic doll girl that must belong to Black Alice. I don't see anyone else having such a thing. With this many new jobs and races, I'm sure it's going to turn into a situation where just pick a broken strat. There'll just be so many of them. Unless the dev does something to really constrict the rules or just have the enemies have their own completely insane broken moves. It, I don't, the combat's just gonna be a joke, it'll be so easy. This little section is just a, a strategy meeting where Alice and Luca are explaining the events of the previous chapters. This will probably be the first thing we do in part three. Just like how at the start of part two, there was a strategy meeting to discuss what has been learned so far. Similar to the question of where Luca got his strange powers in the original trilogy, this, uh, this trilogy has its own huge question for Luca. Where does he get the ability to travel between the universes? I mean, nothing in his background explains it. Nothing we know, anyway. Because the angel powers don't do it. The hero bloodline doesn't do it. Being royalty doesn't do it. So where does this ability come from? And not just Luca. If Luca was the only one that could do it, we could chuck it up to protagonist syndrome. But Marcellus can travel between the parallel worlds as well. So coming up with an explanation for both Marcellus and Luca is going to be tricky. That at least hints that it has something to do with their bloodline still. But then again, why cannot Heinrich do it? What happened in between that time span that gave them this ability? That's the thing that's going to be the big question. I hope it has a satisfying reveal. As for the conversation that's happening here, it just seems to be something where Sister Lamia uh, recognizes Luca, but thought that he was initially someone else until Lazarus points out that the Luca that she encountered earlier at some point is, this, is the same Luca that's traveling with us. And, of course, we have the big decision to make. Are we going to follow the Ilias timeline? Or are we going to follow the Dark God timeline? We have to choose one, at least initially. 
This conversation is almost exactly what we had before. So this is, they probably just repeat it just before we make the huge decision. I imagine that at the start of the game, we head to the Monster Lord's castle, find out that uh, Alice the 15th has been killed by Marcellus. For those of us in the Ilias timeline, we've just find that out. For those in the Alice, then we've already known for a while. But once uh, we do that, I imagine we go and clearing up a couple things left in the current world, such as the Tanuki and Fox villages and the Cockroach Girls. But because once we make our decision and begin the assault on the other worlds, that's going to be it until that route is completed. That's how I imagine it, anyway. And with perfect use of the final Ilias theme, we are introduced to the side where you side with the Dark Goddess to begin siege on the heavenly world. This, of course, means that Luca will become the destroyer because in order for the Dark Goss's plan to work, we must go to each remaining parallel world and kill every person in it. That is because, if you recall their plan, it is to use the evaluation meetings that Ilias normally has to bring the souls of everyone killed into the Dark Gods world so that they will then integrate and combine into single beings. So Luca must destroy everything and become the destroyer. Alright, so obviously Alice is going to get her true form back before we make our decision. So that'll be a nice change of pace. I do like uh, Chibi Alice, but I prefer her original form a whole lot better. <laughs> Those of you who only did the Ilias route may not know, but in the Alice route, Naruko reveals herself to be the spirit of chaos and uses her abilities to stop Sonya and Adramel before they kill each other. Basically, she only removes Adramel from the world and restores Sonya back to her original self. But that's something that only happens in the Alice route. Now some of you might be wondering, why does it say the former strongest swordswoman? Well, I think it's obvious. It's because she got her butt handed to her when Marcellus showed up to kill Alice the 15th. So this conversation right here is basically another breakdown of the Dark God's plan. Only this time, we learn that for the central world, uh, the world where Paradox takes place in, your Arubeti is uh, has ingested the cells of the Dark God, is planning to envelop the entire world to absorb everyone into herself before she blows herself up to send all the souls to the Dark God world. This conversation is just everyone marveling at how the heavenly world is literally a world resting within the clouds. This is just a uh, Alice and Promestine's initial reaction to discovering a lab full of Luca clones. But it does bring up another interesting question. The Heavenly World are able to travel between the, the worlds without Luca. And when 
the Lilith sisters talk about it, they said that it's because that world has something they do not have. And so the question is, is it that the Dark World does not have its own Luca? I could have sworn that because the World Destroyer Luca exists, that they must have their own Luca. It's just the Lucifina was a fallen angel, so she wouldn't have been killed with a lot of the other high ranking angels. But. It would also, them not having one, would explain why World Destroyer Luca looks like he's almost entirely machine. And the Heavenly World being able to clone Luca, do the angels who travel between the worlds, are they required to eat a Luca clone in order to gain his abilities? Not quite sure just from this, but it's an interesting thought. Speaking of Luca clones, we've known for a while that there will be several different variations on Luca clones, this one here being one of them. And it seems like not all of the Luca clones end up being used for their intended purpose. Some of them manage to escape. And judging by the from the abyss part of this sentence, it seems like they can escape into a Tartarus and then come back to basically perform guerrilla warfare on the angels here. So interesting. The conversation is just basically Alice trying to say that if they're against angels then they're Luca and Alice's allies, and then they just reply that they have no allies. Then we are, of course, reintroduced to each of the new archangels in turn. This little conversation is literally about these twin angels being actually nuclear powered. Like, legit nuclear powered. This here is Michaela receiving direct orders from Ilias to kill Luca and his party. This conversation, we learn that Apparently, the original Luca in this world died, and Lucifina is grieving over him. And she decides to attack the party because it's too painful to see our Luca. But what's interesting is it, this looks like it appears to be within a Tartarus rift. That, or it's a part of the heavenly world just uh, gazing over the night sky. Difficult to tell. Alright, this is obviously a goof on the translation, so doing my own translation of this part, and based on the look of Luca and the fact that he appears to be taking darkness within himself in order to fight Ilias, this, uh part seems to actually translate to, I cannot forgive your deeds, Ilias, I'll kill you here. So obviously this is Graham Beria fighting Marcellus, but the question is, is this their initial fight or is this a rematch? I'm taking a guess here, but I'm guessing it's their initial fight. I believe we've seen this exact image before. It was in the very first Paradox preview video, if I'm not mistaken. We've been hint heavily hinted at Black Alice having a strong connection to Angel Killer Heinrich. Something that was enforced when we learned in part two that Black Alice and Heinrich traveled the world just like Alice the 16th and Luca did. 
but we've never been uh, shown conclusively how far their connection goes. My theory is that Luca is not a descendant of Remina royalty, like we were led to believe in part two. I'm thinking that uh, Luca's ancestor was actually a love child between Heinrich and Alice the Eighth, and then the royal family of Ramina essentially adopted it. That is a that would explain Luca's ability to travel between the worlds if, in fact, the same uh, situation that caused time to get all scrambled up with uh, Black Alice becoming the god of chaos, if that affected retrograde, affected Luca's DNA as well, then that would explain how he can travel between the worlds if he is a direct descendant of the god of chaos. Rather than ghost, it seems to translate to demon star. And if that's the case, this seems like something that would be used by the dark god's side rather than Ilias's side. Which I guess would make sense since the dark god's side is to completely destroy the world that Ilias resides on. Of course, next we have a breakdown of the Ilias's plan, which is to have Luca become the judge to decide who is worthy of joining Ilias on her ark for the people of the many worlds. Are you sure about that, Ilias? It doesn't end well for you. Also, a shame that we're going to be stuck with Valalius for a long while. Now, for those of you who only played the Alice version of the game, at the end of part two, Sonya dies. Sonya, Chaos, and Adramelk end up killing themselves as Sonya tries to save the world. She then creates a copy of herself to keep Luca company since she is dead. Luca only kind of seems to have a feeling of the fact that Sonia is actually gone, and he vows to find a way to bring her back for real. But in the meantime, this one is just a copy. Of course, I still don't know why Naruko, who is the spirit of chaos, didn't just decide to use her abilities to save Sonya regardless of whether you pick Alice or Ilias, but I guess the reasoning for that will have to be found out later. It states right there you serve the monster lord. Why are you on the side following the goddess's plan? We get a bit more of this Ilias's plan here. She plans to take over the world where Paradox Luca is currently residing in order to turn the, the world itself into an ark for visitors from other worlds, which of course her and Luca will decide who is worthy of such uh, an honor. I don't know what this particular monster has to do with the world deviating from the timeline. It's literally just a, a monster train, which is, she states she is neither a monster nor a train. She is a monster train. And she's uh, saying that she will only give rides to those who have a ticket. This is obviously Luca in disguise. At least it'll be something for him and Les to bond over.
This Eden here is talking about how she finally realized that Ilias only cared about herself. That the Ilias of this world didn't care about the angels who fought and died in her name. This is Ava. She seems to be the queen succubus of this world. I do not know how she managed that. She must have gotten her Scylla Babylon plan to succeed. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with this conversation, but it seems like Minagi is asking Alma Elma why she a succubus knows martial arts. And Alma Elma again stating that succubi should not learn violent techniques, even though she herself, of course, prefers them. And so she plans to destroy the knowledge of uh, succubus uh, fighting techniques herself, based on what I gathered. That doesn't really make sense to me. This is just Canon uh, saying that she'll eat anyone, even her own subordinates, and Ilias confirming that fact. Here we have Hiriko unleashing all of her tentacles to devour an army of angels that we see in the background here. This is just Saja saying that she will take them on, and Luca saying that they will break through her in order to get to Dark God Alphys. It'll be interesting to see so much of the Dark God because we never really interacted with her before. This is obviously Judgment Luca. And of course, we have the players in the third way. And lest we forget, we still have the mysterious future faction that seems to be having a, a hand in pulling strings behind the scenes and for various events. This here is Luca praying over Sonia and Naruko's graves. And then Promestine pops in to say that Naruko stopped Sonia but it cost them both their lives. Here we see Promestine working on something referred to as Mother, and it seems like at last that it appears that Promestine was in fact the one who built Hild, and that she is the key to opening up the third way. Here we seem to have copies of Sonya saying that Sonya doesn't exist. The person of Sonya doesn't exist, and she just keeps repeating that. Here we have a nice little scene with Hild meeting her older sister, basically the prototype that came before Hild. But who cares about that? We also learn in this little bit of speech that Hild herself is a time machine. Here we seem to have Kagesumuri admitting that she knows that her reanimated monster lords are not enough to take on one of the six ancestors, but that she has a trump card, to which Minagi just shockingly repeats, TRUMP CARD? <laughs> well, here we have Chaos God Alice seeming to have either found or created several copies of, I'm assuming, Heinrich to wait on her hand and foot. Here we have Kagesumurugi fighting with Shirome. It's Kagesumurugi's resurrected monster lords Varg versus Shirome's Cirque de Croix. 
winner, it'll be the only one allowed to use the their special arts. While this just appears to be the same attack he used on Adramilk in the first part, what's interesting is that he seems to have become convinced that destroying all of the monster lords from each of the parallel worlds will somehow prevent the collapse of the parallel worlds, which I guess kind of makes sense seeing as uh, Al Chaos God Alice was a monster lord, but it, I don't really see how it would follow that it would affect her directly. But at least we know what Marcellus has been up to. He's been going to each of the parallel worlds and slaying the monster lords there. Well, here we have World Breaker Luca doing his namesake. I wonder if when we fight uh, the male characters, I'm assuming we will since you can find them in Labyrinth of Chaos, that rather than getting an H scene, you just get a bad end cinematic. That'll be interesting. Here we have Lazarus being crucified after being captured for being leader of the resistance in the heavenly world, I assume. Now we get to the more gruesome scenes. Don't forget uh, that we were pro uh, told that many characters will die over the course of part three and they will be temporarily removed from your party until you complete the game. So make sure you balance your teams and don't rely on a single set of characters. But anyway, in this one, it seems like even in the heavenly world, Lucifina once again betrays heaven, this time for the sake of Luca. Looks like here we have Tamamo no Mei putting an end to that flower archangel in the Ilias world. Tamamo no Mei fighting another one of the archangels. Well, here it looks like Zeon's having her butt handed to her by Lilith. Here we have Saja being killed, but more interesting, she's referred to as the second Monster Lord. That would mean that Saja is uh, more closer to the Dark God's daughter than uh, one of the six ancestors. But then, how? why would she get sealed by the six ancestors' great seal? I thought that... I thought that the Dark God left... Um, left ruling of the monsters to the second monster lord. Huh, I guess it could have been passed down to the third. My memory's not that strong. Interesting placement for some happy times between Chrome and Shirome. And we cap it off with the last words we've heard from White Rabbit that everyone in every world fought their best and everyone failed. She's tired of seeing those endings. She wants to see everyone succeed. Based on this alone, I'm guessing that regardless of whether you choose to go with Alice or with Ilias, the world ends up falling into chaos. It is only via the third way that you can succeed. But so, that's about it. I'm looking forward to it. See you all next time.